Breach League has a special place in my heart because it is the first full league I played of Path of Exile. Mysterious hands reaching out of the ground, ripping open portals and releasing varying degrees of hell upon activation. It was thrilling, intriguing, and very purple, which is nice. But still to this day, the actual lore of Breach, the world they come from, their goals, their culture, has not been illuminated. Even with the introduction of It That Fled, the syndicate member who comes from Zoff's Red Pyre, the actual workings of the Breach realm remain a mystery. We do know that these creatures live in another dimension, and are trying to come into Rayclass through these rifts they create. Like so many otherworldly creatures in other dimensions or cosmos, they yearn to take over our world. In a forum post, GGG made it seem that Breach and Beyond monsters come from the same place, and are perhaps one and the same. The difference being that Beyond monsters spawn into our world, whereas with Breach we open rifts and invade theirs. So Breach is Scourge. I jest. Or maybe I don't. Anyway. We know of five Breach Lords who each embody their own element, which parallel the elements we Exiles can wield. I will be excluding Zesht Ula because I think that's simply a game mechanic addition for the Atlas Passive Tree to drop Breach Stones, and a cheeky combination of the Breach Lords' names. I don't think they're a Breach Lord themselves. I'll go through each Breach Lord, and then we will discuss more of the culture of Breach and its connections to Rayclass. Because Soph is both the most common Breach Lord, but also the most connected to existing lore, I'm going to save him for last. We'll start by looking at Tull, Creeping Avalanche, a female Breach Lord of Cold. All of Tull's items bring up the concept of becoming one, a group of followers wanting to collide together and emerge as one. And while this might seem metaphorical, being unified together in an avalanche, as we'll see, this concept of dying and uniting within that death and pain is pretty universal through the Breach Lords and their followers. In the Great Freeze, we are forged anew, as seen on Tullfall. Esh is a female Breach Lord of Lightning. Her title, Esh, Forked Thought, shows that she is more than just the element of lightning. She is described as having many mouths, and her followers act when she thinks, and think when she acts. I find Esh puzzling because her uniques Esh's mirror and Esh's visage imply that Esh went through some kind of transformation to become a Breach Lord. The mirror says she looked upon her reflection and trembled until she was not what she saw, and the visage says she could see what she was not, a silhouette wreathed in light, and she was still. Perhaps the cycle of mashing and rebirth of masses creates a Breach Lord, rather than some kind of monarchy or dynasty. It's possible Breach Lords could be made unwittingly, as it doesn't seem Esha's transformation or realization was a happy one, but that's complete speculation. Next is Ol Natol, aka Thick Breach Mommy. I mean, thick breaches, guys, come on. Ol Natol, Unburdened Flesh is a female Breach Lord of physical damage, specifically bleed damage. Her followers even refer to her motherly love and desire to return to her to strip their flesh and be embraced by her. The only unique element to Ol Natol's lore is that the infinite pursuit implies her followers are having a hard time getting to her reach, as the distance yet grows. And the Red Trail says they leave a trail so they may know where never we will return. That could be metaphorical, as they will become dust in her embrace and the trail could be blood leading up to their reunion. But it's certainly worth noting. Perhaps Ol Natol is escaping from something, never to return, with her followers trying to keep up with her. The big bad of the Breach Lords is most certainly Cheyula who dreamt. Cheyula is a male Breach Lord of Chaos and he has the most in-game items associated with him, as well as being the rarest Breach Lord to encounter. Cheyula apparently feasts on people's dreams, and has been referred to as the Dreamer, a name that came up briefly from the Envoy in his poetic ramblings about the cosmos. 
Chayula not only feeds on his followers like the other Breach Lords, but he also uses only the best limbs and flesh of his own followers, or perhaps of other lords, to create his armor. Chayula's jewels show that he is motivated to take Rayclast, that he has watched it forever, but that he and his followers cannot go, and that they think this world should be theirs. Why Cheyula has watched this world for so long, and why he thinks it should be theirs, isn't clear. It could be that Cheyula, like the Elder, sees the potential for endless feeding in a world such as Rayclast, with its atlas dangling infinite feasting grounds before him. Perhaps there is some connection between the dimension Breach Lords and their monsters reside in, and Rayclast, that we have yet to fully uncover. Finally, there is Zoth Dark Embers, a male Breach Lord of Fire. And while his lore itself isn't particularly unique, themes of suffering, pain, to unite with him, with the added flavor of fire, he is unique because he has the most connections to Rayclast itself. Zoth's Inception bow mentions the Red Pyre upon which his followers are born. And the Red Pyre is where It That Fled comes from, a somehow escaped Breach monster who did not want to give themselves over to death for Zoth. It That Fled says cook, sizzle, and fry like its kin and kith on the Red Pyre, confirming its origin. But also the Breach scarabs talk about a Red Blade man, Omid, who studied in particular, and specifically, Zoth, Dark Embers. Pharrell is also a Red Blade, and he talks often about his god, the Molten One. But the Red Blades are also known as Ember Dwellers, according to the Scarabs. And remember, Zoth is Dark Embers. Could the Red Blades accidentally or intentionally be harboring the strongest connection between Breach and Rayclast in the form of the Red Pyre? Could Zoth be the Molten One? Before I get too ahead of myself, let's discuss It That Fled. One of It That Fled's most revealing lines to us exiles is that it was born flawed upon the Red Pyre and did not rejoice like its siblings to be pulp and bone for the lords. This confirms that the themes of death, forming together, and uniting with the Breach Lords is quite literal. The followers of Breach Lords are expected to rejoice and give in to dying for the sake of being closer to or becoming part of their lords. But more than that, it's a cycle of death and rebirth. It says when we kill it, just like home, one it dies, one it rises. It's too bad that It That Fled doesn't have more direct interactions with Corel, because that would make this connection easier to draw. Corel, as a red blade, talks all the time about flames, the molten one, and his caldera home. I suspect the red blades are on this volcanic looking island northeast of Esamir because, one, it's got a volcano. And two, he briefly mentions to Jorgen to put our typical relations aside, Thane, and do as I say. Implying that Redblades and Ezemites have existing typical relations. He also says, when defeated, that For this to happen, I must have angered the Molten One. I must make a sacrifice before I become one. The Redblades toss people into the Caldera, which acts as a sacrifice to this Molten One and is reminiscent of the flavor text on Zoff's The Formless Flame. Our skin turns to ash and we are swallowed by his brilliant red light. The Molten One and Zoff could be different, but then what about the connection between the Order of the Jinn's Omid, another red blade, and specifically studying Zoff? Omid was going to be made a sacrifice to the Caldera by the red blades, called Ember Dwellers here before he was taken in by the Order. He was tasked with investigating Zoth and artifacts related to rifts in the boundaries of our world. Apparently his final commandment was that the world must never know about Zoth, but the Winged Scarab reveals that the High Templar, clearly Venarius, learned the truth of the situation. That's all stuff we know and have discussed before. 
Venerius knew about all of the interdimensional monsters that were threatening Rayclast. But why, of all the Breach Lords, would Omid be starting with Zoth? I think it must be a connection between Redblades and Zoth, and that it's entirely possible that the Red Pyre and the Caldera are linked, if not one and the same. It's also worth a quick mention that the warbands like Redblades, Mutewinds, Brinerots, and Renegades all share elements with the Breach Lords. There's no physical or bleeding warband, but the Mutewinds live on snowy mountains and deal cold damage. Brinerots, okay, they don't super fit, they're pirates, but they use lightning. And honestly, I don't know enough about the Chaos Renegades to make much note. It's likely just a coincidence. Having forces and groups representing a specific elemental damage type is common practice in games. But the coincidence of Red Blades and the Red Pyre, Ember Dwellers and Soft Dark Ember, and the fact that it that fled escaped specifically from the Red Pyre to be in our world, it's too much to not be related. It seems that Zoth has come the closest to actually entering our world. He is who Omid started studying. He is where it that bled came from. And I bet that he is the molten one that the Red Blades worship. As for the significance of this, I honestly don't see Breach going anywhere else in the lore. There was an opportunity with Scourge, but that seemed like a similar but unrelated event more focused on the ball and time travel and certainly didn't illuminate any missing pieces of Breach lore. I expect that Breach lore will stay right where it is. A constant peril in our periphery, always reaching out to grasp us with clasped hands, but never fully unveiling itself. Thank you so much for watching, it's your boy Noodle. This Breach video was voted on by patrons, which you can join for as little as $1 a month. And upcoming next is either Blight or Metamorph, depending on which script I can flesh out best. I am recovering from the big C, which you can maybe hear in my voice, so I appreciate your patience. I hope even in my absence, you were able to stay sane, exiles.